So rewind a couple of months and someone told me about these tuners made by this uh, company, M-Tech, that are like plug-in replacements for the various uh, tuners uh, that you can buy from, you know, Yaesu, Kenwood, iCom, and so have you. So this is supposed to be basically the same as an FC40 uh, from Yaesu. Um, and I have found almost no information about these. So um, I got this guy here from... Uh, from China and uh, I figured that uh, I would tear it down and take a look at what we got here in our you know in our box it's the MAT 170 so I figured I'd open this up and I'm there's no way I'm plugging this straight into a radio there's just no way it's gonna get torn down and and looked at uh, before before I even think about plugging it into a radio. It's just not gonna happen any other way. So, let's see what we got here. Accessories, mounting kits, weatherproof cap, coaxial cable, five meters, one piece, coaxial cable, five meters, one piece, well, oh, control cable, ground cable. Okay, so it's, Essentially the same thing as the um, uh, as the FC40. It, in fact, looks virtually identical to the FC40. Just get it out of the box. Oh, this is going to be fun. It kind of looks like an FC40. I have one outside. So this um okay, so this is a ground wire. That's <laughs> yeah. This is that got that stretchy um plastic wrap uh stuff that you can almost never get apart um, you know and it's got a fulgent coaxial cable um, that's not how many meters did it say five meters <laughs> um, I think we're a little bit short on the on the five meters there fellows um, I mean, we're, we're way short on the five meters, so nice try. That's definitely not five meters. Um, got the, uh, the connector, of course, that goes straight into the, uh, into the radio. And this is, in fact, I think I have some of these exact connectors. Um, so it should be something that you can actually pull apart. But let's uh, let's go ahead and open this guy up. So we've got, you know, some sealing. You know, this one does not look like the time that has like a gland in it, unless it does. That seals. There's no way. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> That's not sealed. So. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what's inside. That's a, uh, a plastic, a paper, a paper sticker. It gets wet once, it's going to peel right off. It's, oh, <laughs> this is going to be interesting to see what's in this thing. so many screws. I don't actually know what's in the Yezu. Like, for comparison, I'd have to actually go outside, take the Yezu out of where it's installed, and, um, 
you know, bring it in here. And I'm really not interested in doing it all that. So let's take a peek. Okay. We've got, we've got some stuff, some relays, some caps, and some coils, which is nothing more than this really is. So I drop things all over the floor. So I'm actually pleasantly surprised. Like this actually doesn't look bad. I mean, it, it actually doesn't look bad at all. Like, so we got a microcontroller on here, a little board. It's screwed in. We got a we got a connector here. Uh huh. You know what? This is this is a uh, this is an antenna tuner that is actually capable of being controlled manually. We've got a key, a tune, um, SRT. I, I, I'm, I've seen tuners. I've seen tuners that actually will do this, uh, that are like this, that you can just. Um, you just pulse a lot or tell it when it's transmitting and then tell it to tune and it will just do it and it'll just click all the relays a bunch of times and do its thing it'll do its hunting um you know for uh for a match and move on with life this card that's on here they can just change this card or change the application that's running on it which is what is this microcontroller Oh, that is a nasty bodge too. Ooh, ooh, ooh. okay. It's an Atmega 328. <laughs> check out the check out the the bodged crystal. Oh, okay. So they clearly didn't have the right one. So they flipped it corner to corner and sort of bodged it in there. And I'm surprised it actually um, that didn't come out. I'm going to put that under the microscope and get better pictures of it. But if I could get it close enough to this camera, I'm holding it up to it. You see what they did? They cornered the cornered the thing. So, yeah. So this is the data cable that would ideally be like weatherproofed, but really isn't. This thing is, there's just no way, you know, that's not sealing very well. Um, now the coaxes, the coax is sealed really well in there. Um, yeah, it's the wrong length. I mean, it, the document says five meters, but yeah, that's, that's not good. So the only thing that this thing does, I guess, is interface the existing application that runs on the tuner, which is running on this microcontroller, which is of course... You know, the WA-230, it's labeled. I don't have to look this stuff up. Um, so, yeah. This is obviously how it detects this SWR here. Uh, we got all these big and nice chunky inductors. Um, now, this is supposed to handle like 100 watts or something. Let's see. Oh, well, we have specifications. 1.6 to 30 megahertz with 7 meter or longer antenna element. PEP 150 watts, continuous 100 watts. Memory capacity 250. So that would be 250 frequencies that it presumably would remember. Uh, general condition approximately 2 to 3 seconds um, for the automatic tuning time. Um, maximum of 15 seconds. Tuning accuracy less than 2.1. Yeah, yeah. Usable pole diameter. I mean, it's, you know, the five meter control cable, the five meter this weatherproof cap, mounting kits. There's nothing else in the box that I saw. No, there's nothing else in there. 
So there's no brackets, there's no nothing, which doesn't surprise me. Um, you know, you got your insulator on top, you've got it to give you a lug, that's nice. So, I don't know, little little teardown of this unit. Um, so, the way that this works, I think there's an Alinco one or a something out there that's basically this antenna tuner um, that you can literally just wire up just like this with, with this connector. Tune, key for transmit, SRT. I, I think that basically signals back that it's tuned um, or not. I can't remember. I remember reading about them. And then, of course, there's a 13 volt on the ground. This is a power supply. Um, you know, that would be normally what would come in on this cable from the radio. So, this actually could be adapted as it is to work with virtually any radio. Um, you know, it has the. This this board and, and 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 presumably a small application um, to um, you know to talk to the Yezu. Um, just gonna take it out and look at it really quick. So there's a regulator under it. Um, that is a um, five volt regulator. Nothing too fancy there. I don't know what the the processor is is probably a pick. Um, there's no bodge wires. 74 um, series logic, 7400, uh, 7040. Um, the little um, little guys are what are they? There's um, uh, ULN 2003s. It's kind of multiplexers. Um, probably. I don't know. I have to look them up. I really don't know what they are. So we got a whole bunch of inductors caps it's it's a tuner so anyway uh next step is um because i'm not plugging this i i'm there's no way without unless I, unless i actually look at what this is doing that i'm plugging this into a, into one of my radios i mean i've got a, a 950 sitting over here a 991 there's no way i'm plugging this thing into, into one of my radios so i'm going to give it some power and uh and give it a shot and see if this thing will actually um, tune anything. So anyway, enough of the small teardown of the M-Tech tuner. Uh, Till next time.